Hi, my name's John and I'm a human doing. What are we doing today? We're gonna to fix curb rash on my 20 inch Tesla turbines using rattle cans. Please like and subscribe. Now let's get to it. So what do I mean by curb rash? Well, as you can see here, this is one that's, I'd say a fairly light curb rash. Uh, it's only down to the metal a little bit, but this one in particular here, this is the worst of the bunch that I have. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly deep gouge and it ended up leaving a very sharp edge, which I really wanted to get rid of. And I'm doing all this work with the Duplicolor brand products. I'm using their wheel paint and the sandable primer. Not to give it away, but there's the finished product. Turned out pretty well. So let's start with the uh, less deep curb rash repair. So I'm gonna use 150 grit sandpaper, a little bit of water just to help the paper last, and a little bit of elbow grease, of course. And that's all it's gonna take for this one here, just sand, it only went through the metal uh, in a few small spots, which are, I'm gonna sand deep enough to get rid of all of that. But you can see here, just scrub away almost, and the curb rash disappears. You are ruining the paint when you're doing this, so you could do a small touch up. In my case, I wanted to paint the entire rim because I wanted them to match perfectly. Now on that note, if anybody is just planning on doing a touch-up, um, I do have uh, some information or I can tell you what paint to buy for the touch-ups. Uh, there is something available that works pretty well. So just send me a comment below and I'll answer. Now there are times when power tools come to the rescue and this is definitely one of those times. I want to get rid of this, uh, which is the nastiest curb rash I have of the four wheels. So I'm just taking a Dremel with a sanding attachment just so that I can sort of flatten all this out as best I can. There's nothing protecting the tire right now, but um, I'm, I was confident enough that I wasn't going to ruin the tire, and, you know, spoiler alert, I didn't ruin the tire in any way, shape, or form, thankfully. So I'm trying to get rid of the high spots. As pre mentioned previously, I'm not going to be using any fillers. I just, I'm not confident that those fillers are going to last a long time, that they're going to stick. And here, I mean, I do have a full face shield on, you can't see me, but I'm using a cutoff tool and I'm using that to get rid of the really sharp edge on the end of the, the rim. So it sort of rolled over and turned almost into a knife edge. So this was probably the most difficult part of this particular wheel, uh, the cutoff tool portion. Uh, again, there was no damage done to the, to the tire at all and it turned out pretty well, but I wanted to take off the, the bulk of the sharp edge with this cutoff tool. I thought it was the easiest thing I had. I mean, it's it's really small and it's not a very large area to to, um, to fit in. So I needed something that would fit in that space and give me a nice flat edge on the inside of the wheel. You can actually see pretty well here what's happening. I'm just taking off just that little sharp edge and I will be going over it shortly with sandpaper so that I can actually flatten and round the edge off uh, so even more so that it's it's as close to factory as possible. The Dremel is using 80 grit sandpaper, which is by far the most aggressive sandpaper I'm using for this job, but it is this is the deepest gouge, so I needed something that would take the material off fairly quickly. Now that the Dremel has taken care of the bulk of the work for us, we gotta move back to hand sanding, a little bit more finesse. I am using, you'll notice here, duct tape to protect the rubber, and uh, that's, I'm using duct tape primarily because it's just a heavier tape. I mean, you can use masking tape or something, but, but duct tape is thicker. I find it, it does a better job. It, it lasts a little longer before you sand through because I am going through the edge. So I'm trying to get that edge as flat and kind of as, as factory looking as I can and get rid of that anything rem remnants of that sharp edge. So um, you do want to use something to protect the rubber itself. You can see here the finished product almost finished product actually. It's, there's a little bit more sanding involved, but you can see that it's pretty close to um, the factory edge or the factory look. Again, no fillers. I decided I didn't want to do fillers I mentioned previously. I'm just not confident that they're going to stay. And in this case, I, I didn't think they were deep enough that really I, I, that I needed them. If it was just a pit, I would do it. But in this case, it's, it's a big long gouge. So I thought no fillers required. So once you've got all that curb rash repaired and sanded, you have a couple choices. One, you could just do touch-up paint on the spots that you fixed, or like in my case, you can repaint your wheels entirely. So I'll be repainting the just the, the exposed portion of the wheels. I'm actually doing the same color or a very similar color to factory because I'm thinking about selling these wheels and I don't want to change the color just in case it, it makes them less desirable. So you want to sand everything with 220. I actually go 220 and then I'm going 400 uh, after that. But you start with 220 and the 220 is the most important grit because it gets rid of the sheen that's on the rim, the sort of scuffs up the clear coat. And you know when you're finished sanding your clear coat when it's no longer uh, reflective, when it's not shiny. So if you'll notice here, I'm sanding one spoke that is 
almost finished. You can see this one here, it is still shiny and this one here is not. So the one that's not, the primer would stick to that one there, I still have sanding to do. So you definitely wanna make sure you get rid of that sheen. So once you're happy with your sanding, you're ready to go for paint or before you paint, you're gonna to have to clean the wheels. So I'm using a general purpose sort of wheel de degreaser and uh, I just wanna make sure that the wheels are as spotless as they can be before I move on to paint. Cause again, you wanna make sure those wheels are, are clean before you paint any sort of grease, fingerprints, any of that, it's going to come off or it's going to let the paint come off and uh, that's going to suck for you. So definitely make sure your wheels are clean. I'm doing this, I think I mentioned in my garage because it is cold outside. So I am using the degreaser. I'm using a variety of different uh, cloths just to make sure I'm clean. And I'm using clean water that I have to bring in from the house just making sure that I get them as clean as I possibly can. I'm going over them with a dry towel and I will be going over them with a tack cloth as well. I'm not going to show the tack cloth portion, but I'm making sure that they are clean and dry. I let them dry overnight because I can't, you know, there's just not enough sunshine for me. So make sure they're clean, make sure they're dry. So this is the following day for me, but you could do it same day. Just make sure again that they're nice and clean and dry, but I'm taping up my wheels or I'm taking up taping up the rubber you could use I mean I've seen people use playing cards other things but I'm using tape because I really want to get down into that uh, crevice between the wheel and the rubber I want to make sure I'm painting in there I don't want to leave any spots where uh, it, it it may show that the rims were painted or that they were repaired just want to keep them again looking as factors I can and I thought this was the best method so you can see inside I'm really trying to get it as tight as I can so I can put the paint right up into that edge and that's what it looks like when you're ready and it's time for primer. So as you just saw there, I am using the Duplicolor Sandable Automotive Primer, which is a lacquer-based product. Your first couple coats, in my case, my first two coats are just tack coats. So the tack coats are there to help your third and fourth coat, which are wet coats, uh, make sure that they stick. So again, you're putting on two tack coats, you're letting them dry for 10, 15 minutes, and then you're going over them again with your wet coats. You wanna make sure your lacquer is fully dry before you start going over with your color, which is enamel-based, acrylic enamel. So make sure that your lacquer-based products are dry. And what you're doing when you're spraying, you're just trying to make sure you get every nook, every cranny, uh, every spot on these wheels. Make sure you have even coverage. And it's super important that you make sure that this lacquer-based product is dry. They do not mix. If, you, if your lacquer-based product um, isn't fully dry and you spray over it with an enamel, you're gonna get small bubbles or it's gonna look really funky. I mean, it, it won't stick properly, but if it is dry, it will stick perfectly fine. Enamels work perfectly fine with lacquer, assuming you put the lacquer on first. Never put a lacquer on top of an enamel. But in this case, we're starting with lacquer. It's only the primer, the ba the paint coat and the top coat are both enamels. So we're good to go on their Duplicolor products. And all that information is available on the Duplicolor website. For the paint coat, I am using the wheel coating, the high performance wheel coating from Duplicolor. I'm using the silver, which is actually very similar to the stock Tesla uh, silver wheels, so or silver color. So the trick with enamel is two tack coats, and in my case, I did two medium to wet coats. You just wanna make sure that you're doing each of those coats within 10 minutes of each other. If you let enamel dry for too long, uh, they don't adhere properly, so you won't get a good bond, and the paint won't stay. I mean, enamel's a tough paint, but you want to make sure you're putting it on properly. So it'll leave about 10 minutes in between coats and that's it. You can see I'm using the wheel gloss uh, clear coat. It's in the same family as the, the color coat. So, uh, and it applies basically the same way. You want to put on a light tack coat first. I'm only going to do one tack coat because it's an enamel and it's going to stick well regardless, but I still did one fairly light tack coat. And then I put on uh, three wet coats. Even though I used three coats, I only used one can of paint for, the in, for, or for all four rims. So again, same procedure. You want to make sure you're not waiting any more than 10 minutes. Uh, well, actually, you do want to wait roughly 10 minutes. You don't want to do it immediately. So about 10 minutes in between coats, and that's going to give you the proper adhesion, and it's going to give you the best result in the end. You want to make sure those wet coats are, well, wet, but not so wet you're getting runs. You may take some trial and error. And one other thing I should note before... Um, before I stop yakking here, is you want to make sure that the paint is warm. You do not want to paint uh, with any spray cans unless your paint is warm. So in my case, I heat it up with a, a hair dryer, but if you put it in warm water, whatever it takes, you just want to make sure you do it. Make sure you do it safely. Don't use a heat gun or a torch or something, but you know, you know, you don't want to blow yourself up. But make sure those paint cans are warm. That's going to give you the best um, atomization of that paint. 
going to give you the best uh, coat. It's going to make make it look the most factory. So make sure those paint cans are warm. And this is kind of like the uh, the big reveal, getting rid of that tape. It actually stuck better than I expected. It was a bit of a pain to get off, but I still think it's the best way to do it. I'd rather do this than, than any other way. So remove your tape and uh, check out your hard work. It ends up uh, it ended up turning out pretty well. I am happy with the results and I would definitely do it again this way. So all in all, the entire project, I used one can of primer for all four wheels, two cans of the silver color, and one can of the gloss clear. And that's all it took for me to get all four wheels finished. I only did the faces, but that's all you needed. And again, the result, uh, I think it turned out pretty well. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Please like and subscribe. Leave any comments you have below. Any questions, I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thank you very much. We'll see you next time. No, I'm not going to show you what they look like on the car. It's too cold. It's like minus 10 outside. I can't do that now. Wait till spring. I'll show you later. Ciao.